using similar technology than the Microsoft Kinect, the Intel RealSense D435 camera gives us both color information as well as depth. This is especially important in applications such as robotics, in particular, and the one that I'm interested in is autonomous driving. In this video, I'm going to connect a D435 to a Raspberry Pi 4 and go over all the necessary steps that we need to get it working. It's a straightforward but lengthy process, so I've outlined all the steps in the demos for the Raspberry Pi Wiki. You're welcome to use it as you follow along this video. All right, let's do this. For this video, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4, a microSD card with enough capacity for storing all the libraries, in this case 32 gigs, and an Intel RealSense D435 camera. I'll leave links to the parts in the description of the video. I want to make sure that all the steps are included, so I'm starting from scratch with a brand new image of the Raspbian operating system. I've gone over the process of getting Raspbian running in another video. With a new image flash, I'll go ahead and put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi 4. Connect the D435 over USB. And plug in power. If I've done the setup correctly, I should be able to remote log into Raspbian using SSH. I've covered this process in another video as well. Once I've SSH into Raspbian, the first things I'll do is update and upgrade all the existing packages. The next thing I'll do is make sure that we have as much storage capacity as we possibly can. For this, I'll use the Raspberry config menu so that I expand the file system to use as much of the capacity of the SD card as possible. I'll need to reboot the system before the change is going to effect, and once the reboot completes, I'll move on to increasing the swap space available. This will be necessary for compiling some of the libraries without running out of memory. With the operating system configured, it's time to start installing some software. I'll use the Aptitude Package Manager to install all of them. With the dependencies in place, I'll move on to making sure that the camera is recognized by the operating system. This involves setting the permissions for the USB device to be listed by the operating system. Notice that by default, the administration of the device manager can only be done as root. However, after completing the task, I'll make sure to go back as a default user. The next thing I'll need to do is install protobuf. This is shorthand for protocol buffers, which is Google's method for serializing structured data. This serialization is important for how the communication with the RealSense camera works. I'll need to add the LD library path as an environment variable, download the repository from GitHub, configure it, and compile it. The compiling of protobuf takes a little bit of time. Feel free to let it run and come back to it later. As my goal is to use the D435 camera in Python, I'll also install the protobuf wrappers for that language. At the end of the installation, I can do a sanity check and use the proto command to test that it was installed correctly. One last thing I'll need to install before the LibreOlsense library is a TBB parallelization library. Now, I'm finally ready to install the LibreAlsons library onto the Raspbian operating system. I'll go back to the directory we downloaded earlier, make a build subdirectory, and start the compiling process. Please note that this can take up to an hour, so make sure that you have something else to do while you let the compiling run. Similar to what I did with Protobuf, I'll install the Python wrappers for the LibreAlsons library. This will allow me to use it with the Python programming language. 
this compiling process will also take a little bit of time. This is the last one, however, that we need to do before getting the D435 running. So with the Python wrappers in place, I'll install the Python OpenGL library so that I can visualize the data. I'll need to use the Raspberry config menu to enable the correct OpenGL settings. And then as I don't have the Raspberry Pi connected to a monitor, I'll go into the Raspberry config menu and enable the VNC server that's installed by default in the Raspbian operating system. I'll also set for the operating system to log in automatically and change the screen resolution from default to whatever option as that introduces a bug in the VNC connection. With those changes in place, it's finally time to test things out. Let's go ahead and reboot, install a VNC client on our computer in case we don't have one already, open it and access the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, and we should be able to log into the desktop environment. Then, if we open up a terminal and type in the command RealSense Viewer, we should be able to get the RealSense utility running and help us visualize the data coming in from the camera. The stereo module gives us access to the depth information, and the RGB camera helps us visualize the 1920 by 1080 color images streaming from it. So there you have it. It took a little while, but we've been able to go from a vanilla image of the Raspbian operating system all the way to getting the Intel RealSense D435 camera running. The next steps from this is to use Python and the Open Computer Vision Library to access the color information as well as the depth data and build some cool applications. Make sure you stay tuned for future videos. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.